Hey guys, Jamie here with Journey North. Just working in the shop tonight. Thought I'd jump on. Um, just got a newer, newer old draw knife, an eight inch uh, oak leaf. That's the brand that I collect. Um, that's in that EC Simmons catalog. If I think of it, I'll look this up and put a picture of it here for you. But I'm just uh, tuning it up a little bit. Had a pretty bad edge on it. Um, somebody was a big fan of the flap disc to try to sharpen that sucker. So I just put a cleaned it up, put an edge on it, and just trying it out a little bit and thought I'd uh, show you a few tips on these um, on how to use them when you're hanging an axe. But before that, I figured we'd bullshit a little bit. Been watching a bunch of guys' content, got some good stuff coming out. A lot of people getting out, cutting some wood, starting some little fires, cleaning up brush. And that's great. I, uh, been waiting for some nice days and that snow to melt. We've been getting it, and the snow is melting good. So, uh, yesterday I ran to town and bought a the new slide miter saw right here. to set up on the deck, so I'm going to be working outside. Then I woke up this morning to 8 inches of snow and about 40 mile per hour winds. So we're working in the shop today. That's one of the tools I use, a 10 inch or 8 inch draw knife. Um, figured I'd show you some other tools I use when I hang an ax. Um, it varies depending on the grain, depending on what I'm feeling like using. Um, of course the draw knife. I'll show you all these in a demonstration here in a second. This is just an old western knife that I probably got at a garage sale. I don't remember where it came from. And what I did is I sharpened it and then I rolled over that burr to make it like a scraper. Same concept as a, this is a it's an old chunk of steel card scraper. Got like a 25, 30 degree bevel on it. And then have that edge rolled over again. Pull a pressure on it and push it. These are great for taking a little bit off at a time. I um, believe this is called like a, a chair maker's scraper spoke shave type deal. Um, it more scrapes, kind of like that card scraper. And then, of course, I got some spoke shaves. And if you're going to get into spoke shaves, if you go to your local store or pull something up on the Internet to buy, they're probably going to show you one of these right here. They've been around for a long time. 151 Stanleys. Um, don't buy it. They're junk. Uh, they got this newer style dialing in system that doesn't really hold. The mouth on it is just huge. Um, if anyone's interested, I can find out what models these are. But these are just the older style ones. Nice tight mouth on it. Um, in order to set the depth, you can... Loosen up that screw and push it down to where you need, or you can just firm up that screw and then take it on your bench and wrap it a few times to, you know, increase depth. And a lot of times if you do it on the other side, it'll decrease the depth. And I got another little tiny one that's actually a double. Got a curved and a little tiny blade on it, and this thing's great as well. But, uh, let me spin you around. We'll show you some of this. Just messing around in the shop tonight. Oh, pretty much all these you can get by with sharpening with a uh, basic Norton stone. Two-sided stone will sharpen pretty much all these for you. Um, if you don't have that, you can make you make some of these. Nothing pretty about it. Some scrap wood. Got a coarse sandpaper on that side, medium on that side, wet dry. Take a little Super 77. Just seen Caster Man using that the other day. Um, then I got a fine on here. An old chunk of leather with some stropping compound. Um, when they wear out, you peel that off, put a new piece on, or chuck them and just uh, find some more scrap wood. Um, you will not see me do any sharpening videos. I'll explain that in the future why I won't, but there's just too much content on... YouTube already about that, and most of it's bad. But I will give you some tips here and there. Let's spin you around. Um, I just got an old axe handle um, to play around with here, so I don't have to be too uh, gentle with it. We can hack it up and show you how all these work.
All right, let's see what happens. Let's start out with the draw knife first, just for the fact that I think this is one that a lot of people pick up or want, because they look like they're really fun to use. So you see a guy just shaving off big splinters and pieces with it going with the grain, and it just looks awesome. I'm going to tell you what, on axes, these are not uh, that fun. They're detail work. Um, it's two sides to it, bevel up, bevel down. Um, you have to experiment with them before you use them. Um, I like the 8 inch or 10 inch for the fact that I can kind of hold one edge here and then pivot the other side and you get a lot of control that way. And when you're when you're hanging an axe or carving an axe, this is really what you're going to be doing, little pieces. Because once you get back here and start pulling, it's going to either chatter. We got a nice grain on this axe. We could act, it's, it's pulling really nice. Um, let me flip it over and see how the grain is on that side. And I'll show you why you got to be careful. Oh yeah, this side here, it wants to dig right in. See that? That's way too big on one of these. When you get to something like that, you're going to just keep going deeper. So you kind of got to cut it off. You can go try the grain the other way. What a lot of guys think is this bevel has to be up, and that's not true. Works just like a chisel. One side's going to dig in, one side's not. And this side here is just going to look at the nice little... Can you see, see the little shavings coming off there? And you got to be careful with one of these because you're pulling them right towards you. And uh, my brother did that. Pulled it right towards him. Now he's my half-brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you Learn to skew this, kind of cut some of the grain. Use both sides. I, I'd suggest find an old axe handle just playing with it. But you can see how it digs in right there. You can't do that when you're hanging an axe. It's way too deep. So a lot of times you're going to want to go bevel down. The other thing super handy. Scrape with it like this. That gives you a nice smooth finish. Another tip, I think uh, Casterman showed this last week. Take your rasp, rough that up. Then when you drag this across, it's gonna it's gonna cut all the little pieces off. That way you know you're not going too deep. You can take a lot of material off with this in a hurry, so you got to be very careful. I'm just screwing around. These are really fun, so you got to watch them. You'll end up taking an axe handle and end up with a toothpick in a hurry. Uh, I'm going to do some more videos on these in the future. I guess I'm just messing around the shop tonight. So Let's see what some of the other tools I use is. Basic knife with that scraper edge on it. And these are really nice for taking lacquer off them hardware store handles. Let me get some stain on it so you can kind of see. Just pull it towards you. And I'll give you an awesome finish too. Um, you don't even have to touch that with sandpaper if you got a nice scraper. Card scrapers. Make these out of old uh, hand saws. They work great. This is this one's actually out of a scraper plane. Because I need to sharpen it so it's on my bench. This takes off very tiny bits. These thumbs behind it. Push away from you. And I'll tell you what. That just uh, gives you a hickory, it's a glass-like finish, no fuzzies. Once you start messing with them, you probably aren't going to touch the old sandpaper. 151 Stanley, with the stupid adjustment knobs. These are probably like 40, 50 bucks. No, I, I have no idea. I never use this one. Um, that, that stupid adjustment 
And that large mouth is just kind of a pain in the ass. But they, they do work. See, it's just way too big a mouth on that. You got to find out on a spoke shave which way your grain's going. That's pretty important. So there we're going nice. Get some, get some better curls. But don't buy one of these. Pick up an old one if you can. You can set one side a little bit higher if you want. You hear how much smoother that one is? That green wants to go this way. Like I said, you want it a little deeper? Give it a little wrap. Oh, I got one, got one side a little deeper on here. Might need to loosen that screw on these. If you got that screw set just right, you can. All right. See them nice curls. These old ones are where it's at. This one's kind of cool for uh, shaping some axe handles too with the curve in it like that. I got this one set really fine. These scraper spoke shaves for these don't take much off at all. You can even see them little tiny curls down there. These are super easy to make as well. You can go uh, check out a YouTube video on how to make one of these. You've all seen the the rasp, Shinto rasp, Farrier's rasp, four in hand. Let me know if you guys got a favorite way to do this. I mean, to take down a lot of material, it's hard to beat one of these suckers here. That's why you can't be wrenching on these. You can take that handle down just... There's a nice straight grain on this one. Try bevel down. Usually you want your wrists almost straight on these. And see that doesn't want to dig in. That wants to wants to roll on that back edge. This is still way too aggressive for hanging a axe. This is a technique you should really try is uh, I kind of call it, I don't know if you guys know what a clogger's knife is, but it's always attached on one end, and then you just use this end, like on a wall, but I kind of use that motion, where you only use one hand, pivot it along, and instead of just using your arms all the time, rock your feet back and forth, that gives you a little bit more control as well. You find yourself going deep like that, break it off. You can fix it by scraping it, coming back this way. I don't know if I'm showing you guys anything or not, or just having fun messing up a handle. Bill Melton, hope you're doing all right, bud. I know you're having a rough go, we're all thinking about you. I've been watching your updates. Ah, 
God, this is fun. I gotta get a shave horse built for this summer. Get out there with some of that alder. Show you how one of these really shine. Green wood. You get one of these in green wood and it's you'll make sawdust in a hurry. Big long strips, whatever you want. You can see how this is. You want to take stuff down in a hurry. You can do it. More than likely you're not gonna be doing that. got that uh, this, this curved one here sharpened. I just picked this one up not too long ago. I did sharpen the straight one. We'll see what it does. And these really are for making spokes on a wood wheel. These curved ones like that. Real specialty. one does work. That profile it put on there that quick. Some of you guys that carve your own uh, axe handles I really want to mess with one of these. If you want me to find uh, the model number for it leave me a hint there in the comments and I'll do that. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure this is a Stanley, but it was made for uh, E.C. Simmons. It's Oak Leaf brand. I highly suggest one of these. It just makes a... You can get two tools in one for messing with axes and anything round. I mean, they're great. If I could have two of these tools to do pretty much everything with, not including a rasp, it would be these two right here. Of course, why would you only pick two tools? That's insane. This is oak leaf as well. Uh, this is a wood joy. I believe you can still buy these ones. The scraper spoke shaves. Old knife, everyone should have one in the shop anyways. Eight or ten inch draw knife. The smaller these get, the more expensive they seem to be. So eight and ten inch are uh, a little easier on the price, on a wallet, in your price range, you know. This here is also, like I said, WM Ender's Oak Leaf. That's my uh, go-to good products. I collect it. How about you stare at my face for a minute? Ah, that was bullshit, huh? I just think they got some cool products, Oak Leaf. Yep. Got some cool stamps in there. These are just on the blade itself. You can see that or not. Stanley 151. Stay away from it. Unless it's an old one without these adjuster knobs. You're not going to like it. You're going to get real frustrated with it, to be honest with you. I know, because I've had this for years. Every time I use it, I get frustrated and toss it back up on the shelf. I should get rid of it, but... Uh, well, as you can see, I kind of like tools. Sharpen up all these with a combination stone, sandpaper, 
little Arkansas stones. Like I said, you're probably not going to ever see me do a sharpening video. Um, just because I think there's too many on the internet already for knives, chainsaws, handsaws, chisels. You name it, there's video, 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 tons of them for it. And in that video, if they're going to show you how to do a fillet knife, if they don't do 10 fish in front of you right there, if they do one fish and say, oh yeah, it works great, if they shave a little bit of their arm hair off, there's nothing to go by on that. Yeah, it might be sharp for a little bit, but I can make a knife sharp to do one fish. In the summer, I do two, three hundred a day. So you got to kind of experiment and get the edge you want. Videos get into a lot of different geometries and back bevels. Stuff like that. Well, you chainsaw guys know how many, how much bad information there is. That's why I probably never do a sharpening video. You'll see me sharpening here and there. Yeah, I hope this was somewhat entertaining. A little informative for you. Hope everyone's doing good. Hopefully, uh, snow melts here quick. Get out and do something. I will be heading to Wisconsin in May. So we're going to hit up some uh, antique shops. Maybe garage sales, thrift shops. See what we can find. Give you a little tour around there. You missed out last time I went, so uh, I'll be sure to get a little more video this time. All right, guys. Take your easy. Like, share, subscribe. But go in the comments and check out some uh, some of the other subscribers. Give them a view if you like it. Hit their thumbs up. Hit their subscribe button. Bill Melton, you take care, bud. We're all thinking about you. Take her easy, guys.